Good morning YouTube, Matt here, aka Bellins. Um, sorry if I sound like absolute rubbish, I think um, the change of weather has got the better of me and I think I'm coming down with a cold or something. Uh, but yeah, this is maybe the third time or the fourth time I've tried to record this video. Um, the other three or four attempts have either resulted in Vegas not wanting to render the video or the recording becoming corrupt, or something else, which is extremely annoying. However, it is here, the long-awaited Easy Doc tutorial. I will say before I start this, this is just my way of doing things. Um, it works for me. It may not be textbook Easy Doc setup, but, you know, if it works, I'm game, which it does, and you've all seen it working live in my stream. So everything should be good for you if you just uh, just follow what I'm doing. Um, I'm not gonna go and show you how to download it and purchase it from the from the Flight One store because I'm sure you're able to do that yourself. I will post the links below the the video though. Um, when you've installed it, please make sure you go and get the 1.17 update. Um, I'll also link that below. When you download the initial installer from the Flight One uh, page. It's only version 1.15, um, so you need to upgrade to 1.17. Once you've installed it, you will uh, be left with this uh, easycaconfig.exe on your desktop. Uh, this is a really important tool. Uh, if you do not run this, and you go into Flight Sim, and you go to an aircraft, and you load into the aircraft, the chances are that you will probably be underground looking at something really irrelevant and you'll be scratching your head and wondering why something you just paid quite a bit of money for isn't working. And it's a simple case of RTFM, if you don't know what that means you should probably google it. Um, and it's also the reason why I probably got maybe three or four refunds, then eventually on the, the fifth time stuck with it because I really wanted to figure it out and that's how impatient I can become sometimes which isn't good one of my many flaws anyway um, this this uh, this configuration this easy CA uh, config.exe every time you install a new aircraft you must run this configuration file it sets the the camera um, points in all of the aircraft and it also applies any presets um, if EasyDoc has them. Um, so what you need to do is really simple. Double click on it and you'll be given this window. You can see I'm using version 1.17. Make sure it does say 1.17 in this sort of top right corner here. And then press configure FSX and it'll whiz through your aircraft and it'll fix them all up. And it will give you a message saying the aircraft's configuration has passed successfully and please start FSX. So as I said, make sure you do that every time you install a new aircraft, otherwise it will screw up. So next we need to go to Flight Sim. It's worth noting here that when you load Flight Sim for the first time after an easy dock installation, you will be prompted to, to accept some of the DLLs and the EXEs. Just, just go with it. Um, they're not malicious or anything like that. They make it work, but I'm sure you're used to accepting stuff like that. Uh, if you're running other um, add-ons, uh, that there's absolutely hundreds that I could name. Um, I would uh, not worry if your flight sim takes a little bit longer than usual to load on the first time load. Um, you'll see why. For I don't know why they've done it this way, but I guess it works, so I'm not going to complain. Um, it, it kind of double loads itself, so you're, it'll look like it's frozen, and all of a sudden you'll get the kind of the the spinny wheel thing that makes it look like it's crashed. And then in your taskbar, you'll see down here somewhere uh, an easy dock tray icon, uh, and also in the notification area you'll see another easy dock uh, icon. Um, that is how it runs. It runs externally to Flight Sim. However, you can set key commands, which I'll show you how to do, which puts everything into Flight Sim. So you don't really have to mess around with it once you've set it up. Um, the only thing you'll then need to use the uh, 
the actual client for is to uh, is to right click and add new cameras um, but then once you've done that once you can leave it be um, yeah it's that simple hopefully I'll be able to do this in real time without video editing uh, and if I can't then I'll have to uh, to kind of cut little bits out because this may be uh, a rather long video Okay, as you can see, there's the easy dock tray icon or the, the notification icon in the right hand side, followed by this uh, in the actual taskbar. You know, Flight Sim is about to kick itself into shape, and there we go. Okay, so easy dock uh, utilizes the following buttons, or I have found that it utilizes the following buttons. And that is anything that is on the numpad on your keyboard, page up, page down, up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, right arrow, and also um, shift and A, shift and S, A on its own, and S on its own. So what we need to do is you need to go to settings, you need to go to controls, you need to... Uh, my my controller is is disabled, and of those of you who are vigilant, you'll see that at the moment I've got my X52 plugged in because my G940 has seen the last of its days. Apparently, um, Logitech are still yet to get back to me on a, a solution to why it stopped working. We'll see what happens from there. Anyway, um, go to buttons and keys, and if you just pick one that doesn't have anything, an event that doesn't have a keyboard assignment to it. The easiest way to do this is literally press new assignment and then start wherever you want. So if you want to start uh, with the arrow keys or the num keys or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, you just press it and it will tell you this event is currently assigned to blah, 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 blah. Okay. Press OK. So it takes it away from the current assigned event, which will then put it into this event and then you can delete it and then it's completely free from them all okay so if if again we'll do it with with the a so if we go new assignment a it's currently assigned to that event we'll take it away from that event and put it on this event so we don't have to scroll through and find it and then we'll delete it i'll do it two more times shift s that's available okay so we don't need to figure that out shift a that's not available so we will make it available onto this event and then we will delete it oh, so all you need to do is rinse and repeat that method with everything so just just listen carefully uh, because this is really important and i don't really know a way to portray this without telling you it um i guess i could do some sort of visual diagram but that would take far too long arrow keys all of them page up page down all of the numpad shift a, Shift S, A and S. They're the only ones you need to concentrate on. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Once you've done that, feel free to go into Flight Sim and boot it up. Uh, I'm going to go to somewhere really quick to load. So, good Johannesburg, it always seems to work best. Uh, stick it in the day so you can see what I'm doing and hit Fly Now. Okay, so Flight Sim's loaded. Uh, we're in the trike in the day in Johannesburg. Uh, you then can either go about it two ways. Add-ons, Easy Dock, Show Studio, or if you're lazy like me, just double-click the tray icon. You will get to this either way. It runs over the top of Flight Sim, so don't, you don't need to worry about losing Flight Sim in the background. Um, you'll see, courtesy of the guys at Easy Dock, they have some preset views already. You've got Pilot Eyes. Uh, panel, which moves you down to there, throttle, which moves you to there, com radio, which puts you down to the radio, and then the engine, which is there, okay? Um, so, before we before we go into how we get to these views and how we switch between them, we need to just do a few little settings. Um, I actually need to plug my joystick in, while the other side of it, because it's an X52 and they have two components, just so I can... There we go, done. Okay, so if you go to options and then general settings and just make sure everything is as you need it to be. Uh, you can change all of these settings as you wish. Um, if you want to copy my settings now, I guess you pause the video and, and just take a look at what is is on the screen. 
Uh, I turn the sounds off for the clicks because I think it makes a horrible noise when you press your middle mouse button. It makes that stupid Windows clicking noise. Um, I also hide the cursor when the middle mouse button is pressed so it looks more of a smooth pan than a pan with a mouse in the middle of it. Um, tray bar icon, as honestly, it all, all up to you. I do disable Easy Dock when slow mode is active because it's a pain in the ass. Um, again, it's up to you how you do that. Uh, set application priority is also set to high, but that's how it comes as default. Uh, so that's that. Next, uh, just, just skip the define keys and buttons for the moment and go to joystick configuration. And just make sure in, in J1, so joystick 1, you can have up to 3, that your joystick is selected. So you can see there it is there. Okay, once that's done, go to define keys and buttons. Now, because we took the, the default Microsoft assignments away from uh, Microsoft well, from FSX itself, we now need to put them back into EasyDoc. So, the best way I can explain this is these should already be in by default. So, up, down, left, right, page up, page down, blah, 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 blah. Okay? They uh, are what we removed, what I told you to remove. Um, Okay, so the cycle view cameras are pretty simple. Next and previous camera is really the only one you need to worry about, okay? Set two keys that will, which will make you pan down the list and pan up the list. So next camera will be moving from pilot eyes to panel, which if I press it now, it doesn't want to do because I'm not actually out of this, but you'll see in a minute. Um, if, if I come out of this and press button 21 and 23, you'll see that it goes, let's see if we can get it with easy docking as well. There you go. So that's button 21 and that's button 23. So down, 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 back, 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 back. You get the point, okay? So you need to find easily, easily, so you need to find easily accessible buttons on your joystick, which allow you to flick between views, right? So back to the find keys and buttons. Um, you, the only other thing you need to do now is re-put the controls from the default view system back into EasyDoc. So next in current category is A and next category is S. Uh, you can also assign, I put my hat switch on the S one so that if when I press my hat switch, which you should be able to see now, it switches to a different view and therefore we can pan around the said view. Okay, so moving on to the next question. How do you skip world cameras? Because we all know when we click the world camera, we end up in some remote place. And then, then when we come back, everything's blurry because it's just had to load somewhere halfway across the planet. Well, do not fear. Um, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, if you just set a key command for the first camera um view in each category of just virtual cockpit and aircraft then you will never have to go to the world section there isn't a way of disabling the world section there is a way of bypassing it so with pilot size or pilot eyes if you just set a button for that which i already did do but i'll set it again and then with uber pilot set another button and then all you need to do is when you're in flight sim if you're on the outside view and you know you think oh, i need to be in the flight deck to look at something just hit the button and you'll go back and then you can cycle through the views just normally um same for if you want to go outside the aircraft and look around you can do that uh, as you can see you can also move around with the arrow keys and to move uh, the actual pan of it if you hold the middle mouse key and then move your mouse then you know you can see that that's pretty fluid it just moves around with no problems um, again, if we want to go back, just hit the buttons. So all you need to do is assign a button to, to this one and the top of this one. Um, the, uh, there is no real problem in this at all. Um, if you find that when you're panning through, you've got, let's say if we go to throttle and we remove the C from that, you'll notice that as we pan through, when we get to throttle, it'll skip now to com radio. And that's because the C is for the sequence. So if if the if C isn't ticked, it will miss it out. And if it is ticked, then it'll it'll cycle through it, yeah? Uh so make sure the C is ticked. And make sure the C is ticked on the very first one as well, otherwise you won't be able to get back to the first view and it'll really infuriate you. Um as far as the, the view controls go, um it's entirely up to you what you do with it. Um I leave that up to yourself. The effects, I use the the presets from angle of attack. Uh, with their NGX stuff, 
uh, so you can go grab those. Um, I will load up the NGX um, and just show you how I have my view set up in that so you're not confused. Uh, this video is already extremely long, I do apologize and I hope you haven't fallen asleep yet. Uh, let's grab, grab Alaska. Ready for the grey textures to load, and ah, there they go. Right, okay, cool. So, uh, it's still initializing system, so it'll probably be a bit laggy, but you'll get the point. So, I have left seat, which is there. I also have, if I want to scroll to the next one, left CDU, which is the left CDU. I have the forward overhead, which is actually technically the whole overhead, because I've modified someone else's easy dock thing. Uh, the radio panel on the right seat. And if I want to switch to the uh, wing view, uh, like an idiot, I renamed the, the right wing view view and called it left. And the left wing view view, I called it right. Um, yeah, can't really get away with that, but whatever, you get the point. <laughs> so, that's how you do it. Um, I have the keys set to that and that. I always use the same keys to go get between different ones. And then I use the up and down buttons to, to pan through them all. Okay. Uh, I think that is us done. Um, track IR users, uh, I will link a video to how you can set up Track IR. There's a guy that's already done a bunch of easy doc tutorials on the internet, and that's kind of how I learned. And then I got some tips off of a few friends that also use easy doc. It's incredibly frustrating when it doesn't work, but hopefully I've kind of stuck it out there in layman's terms. You just need to do a few things. Make sure your controls aren't assigned within Flight Sim. Set up the buttons for the virtual cockpit and the aircraft view so you bypass the world camera. Make sure you run the config program before you get into the actual flight simulator uh, if you've installed a new aircraft. And apart from that, everything is really much... Uh, re really. And apart from that, everything is pretty much ready to go. So, yeah, we are done here, I think. Just approaching the 20 minute mark which isn't great so i'm sorry for keeping you that long um any questions don't hesitate to stick it below in the comment box or hit me up on facebook or twitter or whatever else i use uh youtube etc etc facebook.com forward slash balance hd if you want to get involved uh, for those of you that are interested the world tour starts on monday the 5th of august live on my stream twitch.tv forward slash balance everyone until then well, until my next video even. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.